Hey, it's Yazi, and it feels like it's been a really long time even though I brought out a match video on Monday, but it feels like it's been a while since I've sat in front of a camera. Today I'll be going over the Brute and Guardian rulings, along with auras and how pitching actually works. It feels like a lot of people are kind of stumped on a few ideas of how cards work. So we'll start off right now the Reckless Rampage. When you discard a card with 6 or more attack during your action phase, Intimidate. Now I've seen a lot of people question if Crippling Crush and Reckless Swing trigger on this during your opponent's turn, unfortunately it doesn't. It only triggers on your own action phase. Next card is Romping Club. Now, Romping Club reads as follows. When you discard a card with 6 or more attack, Romping Club gains 1 attack until the end of turn. This is during both players' turn. So during your opponent's turn, it is able to gain in attack though it will lose all the attack benefits at the end of the turn, or end of their turn. Currently there isn't anything that works around the amount of attack that your weapon has, though down the track there may be a difference. Scab Skin Leathers, once per turn, action, dash, zero. Roll a six out of die, gain action points equal to half the number rolled, rounded down. So the two rulings about this, the first one is yes if you roll a one, you don't get any action points for the turn. Half of one rounded down is zero. But the second one is the dash one, oh, the, the dash zero. Now I originally thought that this was just a typo and it just costs one resource to play this card or we'll use its action. I did message the people over at Flesh and Blood. It is a free cost action to play. Another thing on armors as well, with Battle Worn, you can defend it for 2, then defend it for 1, and then once it gets to 0, it doesn't get destroyed. It's only destroyed if a card states it's destroyed, kind of like how Break Blade works. Reckless Swing is the next card we're looking at. So, um, it's a defense reaction card for 4, and as an additional cost to play Reckless Swing, discard a random card. If the discarded card has 6 or more attack, deal 2 damage to the attacking hero. So, let's make a scenario. If your opponent is attacking for 6, and you defend with just this, so you're defending for 4, and both you and your opponent are on one life. Now this happens more than often. If you defend with this, and you discard a 6 or more, the effect goes into play once this card has been resolved on its discarding. So that would give you the win in the game, as you're dealing 2 damage to your opponent, before they're dealing those two extra damage to you. Next we'll be looking at Bonehead Barrier. Now the card, the point that we're really looking at is the fact that it's a brute instant that costs one. If you want to play this card, you do need to pay a one resource to play this card. You can play this during your own turn and you can also play this during your opponent's turn. But you still do need one resource for that, so you will need to pitch for it. The next is a ruling about pitching. Now, when you play Brute, you really want to only discard cards that cost 6 or higher, so you can gain Intimidate off Reiner. So Savage Swing, it's a 1 cost Brute attack, with the effect as an additional cost to play Savage Swing, discard a random card. I've noticed in myself and a lot of other people as well, we're kind of pitching and then pitching at the start of the turn and then just leaving the resource there to gain over time. So you could like pitch and then play a card. Unfortunately, this is wrong. You're unable to pitch before you play a card. The way this card game works is kind of like how, let's say Dragon Ball Super works. First, you reveal the card, and then you see if you have enough resources to play the card. Then you're able to pitch a card from your hand to gain more resources. It is a minor drawback for Brute, as you need to set up your hand a lot more thoroughly though putting out a lot of zero costs in the deck is very helpful. So you can s set up these big turns. On the contrary though, Wrecking Romp is a two cost card. If you have a full hand and you want to play Wrecking Romp, but you're scared that you may hit that one card in your hand that's red, that doesn't have six attack, you're able to pitch that red card first and then pitch any other card after so you can gain the additional resources so you can be able to discard a card with six or higher from your hand. 
the way that I originally thought is if you're discarding, if you're pitching cards from your hand, they're all kind of pitched at the same time. But the way the ruling works is you pitch a card and then you're able to pitch another card. So it's like a stacking effect, like a chain. Next I'll be looking at two different cards which is Primeval Below and Awakening Below. What we're really looking here is the fact that Awakening Below states the next brute attack action card you play this turn gains one gains X attack. While Primeval Below states your next brute attack this turn gains X attack. Primeval Below allows you to use both your weapon attack and cards from your hand as well. While Awakening Below states that it has to be an action card, so you're not able to gain the additional attack off your weapon attack. It has to be an action card, and action cards are cards that you play from your hand. That's it for the brute cards, so we'll go straight on to Guardian. So we'll look at Bravo Showstopper. You're able to pay two resources to gain Dominate. Now, I've seen a lot of people talking here and back and forth about Dominate. Dominate reads as follows. The defending hero can't defend the attack with one or more cards from their hand. That doesn't read at a time. A lot of people are getting confused if you can use a block from your hand and then a defense reaction from your hand. You're only able to play one card from your hand for the, that turn. Though you are able to block a card from your hand and then a card from your arsenal as well. Anothis, just like Romping Club, has a stacking ability. If you have two or more cards in your pitch with cost three or greater, Anathos gains two attack. So that can include your opponent's turn as well. Currently there isn't anything that works around having an attack how big your weapon is, but it is something to keep in mind. Helm of Eisen's Peak is a very easy one. Action, one resource, destroy your Helm of Eisen Peak. Your hero gains one intellect till the end of your turn. The one intellect just basically means you draw one extra card at the end of your turn. Next we'll look at Tectonic Plating and Auras. So, Tectonic Plating, once per turn, action, one resource. Create a Seismic Surge Aura token, go again. Now if we look at Seismic Surge Auras, it reads as follows. At the beginning of your action phase, destroy Seismic Surge. The next Guardian Attack action card you play costs one less to play. So the ruling that's coming up here is a lot of people are thinking you could just keep stacking every single turn with or is over and over and over again. It's what I th originally thought as well. I thought you could basically never swing your opponent for a while and just keep playing a lot of Stonewall Confidences and other stacking auras so you can just get off a big attack against your opponent. Though the ruling states at the start of your turn, all of, all of the effects that state at the start of your turn go off and then you enter your action phase. If you choose not or to play an action card, you're still entering your action phase. So all of your auras pop at this one point. So that means your stonewall confidences, that means your emerging powers, that means basically any other aura that's like this, that state at the start of your action phase pop when at the start of your turn. Next card is the card that I announced, which is Spinal Crush. It's just something that I wanted to go over as I did state in the past a little that it worked a little bit differently. Um, and it is if your if Spinal Crush deals four or more damage, action cards, activated abilities, and attacks they loot control lose and can't gain go again. Um, I stated in the past that I thought it was only that they can't gain go again, but it's everything. Everything that can have go again and everything that has on it loses go again. And the last card that I wanted to look at is Staunch Response. It's a Guardian Defense Reaction that costs two to play, to defend with. Now, I had a few people asking how defense reactions work and if, you're, if you still need to pitch for them. Unfortunately, you do. It does happen in a different step as blocking steps is a different, different phase altogether. You aren't able to block with defense reactions during your block phase. You can only use them during your defense reaction or attack reaction phases. Because someone clearly asked if he could use these during his turn. During his defending turn rather than using it during his defense reaction. And the other ruling is within its wording. As an additional cosplay storage response, you may pay 4 resource. 
if you do staunch response gains 3 defense. When this card first came out I questioned if this card really did cost 6 or if it cost 4 because it only states you may pay 4. It doesn't say an additional 4, it just says 4. I messaged the people over at Flesh and Blood and they confirmed that it does mean you need to pay an additional 4. So if you wanted to gain the extra 3 defense you still need to pay, still need to be able to pitch more so you, you're paying an additional 4. So in total 6. That's it for the video. Um, I hope you guys learnt something. Maybe share the information around with your friends and all that. I'm still learning. I'm reading rule books and going over cards every single day. As long as uh, probably a lot of other people are as well. If there's any other weird rulings that you think that I need to bring up, definitely let me know and I'll put it in a video. That's it for now. I'll see you in the next video.